Hi, my name is Rebecca Zabarski with Carrot Analytics, and you are watching the Global TV Demand Awards Virtual Festival. It's my pleasure to be speaking with two of the forces behind NBC's medical drama, New Amsterdam, one of the most popular TV shows of 2021. We have producer and writer, David Schulner, and actor Ryan Eggold, who plays Dr. Max Goodwin. Thank you both for joining us. Thanks Thank for you. having us. <laughs> so New Amsterdam is based in reality. It was written as an adaptation of the book, 12 Patients, Life and Death at Bellevue Hospital by Eric Mannheimer, which is about one of the oldest public hospitals in America. And the show is currently in its fourth season and is a global success. So it was a finalist for the most in-demand book adaptation of 2021. So I'd like to know in your own words, why do you think the show is so popular with audiences all over the world? And... Ryan, why, why don't you go first? <laughs> hey, man, you, you got the guy who created the show here and you're going to meet first. All right. I was going to say it's so popular because of Ryan. So I was gonna... <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's easy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I wish. No, it's, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I can only speak to what I, I don't, I can only speak to what I love about the show, which is what I love about the show is that David captured a real authenticity um, and a real humanity. And I think it looks at health in a different way. I think there's a lot of medical shows that have medical procedures and things, and of course, interpersonal drama. But what I love about uh, New Amsterdam is it looks at um, social issues um, and uh, things that we don't necessarily associate immediately with health as health issues like global warming or systemic racism or all these different issues that we're all dealing with in some form or another. Um, and the hospital is this microcosm for this larger world outside and what brings people um, to the hospital uh, and what is affecting their health, which goes beyond, um, I think, sort of, you know, what we've traditionally considered uh, simply health issues. And um, so it's, it's, its scope is larger in that way. And that's what I, that's what I really, like about it. And then you have real people, real characters um, um, dealing with these um, issues uh, on a very micro personal level. So it's that, it's that combination of the, the, the macro and the micro that I really love about it. David, what about you? You know, Ryan said something when we first started talking about the show to the press before it even aired, someone asked Ryan what drew him to the show or what made it unique. And, and I remember we were in Las Vegas <laughs> of all places. And right Ryan now. said the thing that he loved about the show and the thing that made it different was that it offered hope. Um, at its core, it's optimistic. Um, we all know there's problems with healthcare and it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, healthcare in America is in turmoil in crisis. And that's the one thing we can all agree on. And what New Amsterdam tries to do is to not only highlight that, but to, but to say there's hope coming out of it. Um, we try to be optimistic and, and offer solutions, not just highlight the problems. Yeah. You know, you're talking about a, a genre, right? Medical dramas where you can, um, it's not always so hopeful, right? There, there are a lot of types of shows that really kind of um, hone in maybe on the, the doom and gloom aspect of that. Um, and I, I wanna talk a little bit more about the genre and I have some data to share, you know, we are, we're, we're the numbers people. And mm -hmm. so when we look at the demand for medical dramas globally, we actually see that the demand or the interest in medical dramas uh, exceeds the supply. And it's one of the fastest growing subgenres globally. So in 2021, from the first year, I'm sorry, from the first week of 2021 to the last, it grew 20% in demand. So, you know, when there is this incredible interest from global audiences yeah. and a, um, a small number of, of shows, including New Amsterdam, obviously, um, translating that, those dramas to the screen, I want to talk more about how each of you approach 
the genre to make it stand out. Uh, you know, David, in terms of writing and producing it, what is that process like? How are you how are you focused on this show to make it stand out from all the other medical dramas available? You know, that's definitely not our goal. Um, we don't we don't approach each episode trying to be different, to be honest. We have a core group of writers uh, who've been with the show since the very beginning, and they bring their unique ideas to their episodes. So it's not just me. I have a wall of ideas that I think are amazing. And I think every writer should take a note card from my wall of ideas and start writing. And they all ignore my giant wall of ideas because they have their own, I know, they have their own passions and their own interests and their own inner conflict that they're dealing with. And they find the stories that come out of their life or their family members or their friends or their neighborhood or their religion. Or, and, it, and it becomes a much broader canvas to paint on than my wall of ideas um, that I think are great. So I, I think it's, it's different because each writer that we have comes at the show from a very different point of view with a very different lived experience. And that's what makes the show different if, you know, if we're looking at differences, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then from the, from the acting perspective, Ryan, you know, when you're um, being Dr. Max Goodwin, what's the most challenging part of, of that, of bringing to life these real stories and things maybe that those writers are taking from their own life? How do you approach that when you're bringing those stories to life? Well, first off, I'd like to say, I also have a wall of ideas. Um, no one has looked at it, including Aww. David. So yeah, we could start there. It's got um, vampires is one idea and aliens Blood? as well. So um, yeah, Blood? I'm just saying, yeah, <laughs> Medical? If, yeah, you know, you, you, you might want to take a peek. Um, no, I, uh, when approaching the performance of it, I mean, the, the, what makes it easier is when the writing really lands. Um, and it so often does because David and the rest of the writers often write complex situations and and like I said real people you know um, characters that are very believable and very steeped in you know idiosyncratic um, reality relatable reality which is helpful and then the other bonus is the cast is you know unreal I mean Freema, Janet, Tyler, Jocko, um, ev everybody um, is really really good and really fun to play with and so it's just about when you get those good scenes trying to connect, you know, and trying to find a real moment and trying to collaborate with everyone to land these ideas, these conversations, these themes in, um, in real, you know, human behavior, hopefully a real, a real feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, when we're talking about reality, we can't ignore the fact that COVID is obviously still underway, right? We're still within this, this global pandemic. Um, and I know that early on in March, 2020, production stopped uh, for New Amsterdam, like it did for many shows. Um, and productions were faced with a very real challenge of figuring out how to integrate or not integrate COVID into the storyline. And so, you know, we saw a lot of productions and shows um, they did different things. They maybe ignored it altogether. That was one choice. They kind of jumped into the future and COVID is essentially in the rear view mirror. Um, you know, we've, we've, we've watched shows like that and New Amsterdam chose to incorporate it into the storyline. So I want to know what were those conversations like? How did you determine how to handle COVID-19 within the storyline of the show? I don't think we had a choice, to be honest. We're a uh, the show is about a public hospital, clearly, if not blatantly, obviously based on Bellevue, America's mm -hmm. oldest public hospital uh, in New York City, which was the epicenter of the pandemic and the first wave for America. We filmed in Bellevue Hospital. We filmed in Kings County Hospital in Brooklyn. And we filmed as cases were coming in. Hmm. 
as our crew was getting sick, as our actors were getting sick, our medical advisor, Lisa Wing, is the head nurse in the emergency department at Bellevue. Wow. We have an amazing uh, surgeon, uh, Dr. Jeff, um, who is also a consultant for us. And we saw them basically go to war. Mm -hmm. And it just felt, how could we not acknowledge, honor, uh, give thanks to the first responders who are still, you know, working harder than ever and putting their own profession above their families and them, their own personal health. So we just, didn't, we just felt like we didn't have a choice. We couldn't run away from it. We had to confront it head on as, as best we can and to be as honest as we could. Mm -hmm. Ryan, what about acting that? you know, being the face of that storyline and, and essentially acting a role that was evolving in real time. Have you ever done anything like that? What did it well, feel like? What was going through your head? It's just so hard for me because I have to wear a mask at work and it's just, it's really unbelievable. The challenge of that, I'm teasing. Um, it, uh, <laughs> that would be I'm, tough. That would take your acting to a whole nother level. <laughs> I'm teasing. We do. We do. We have wonderful protocols in place. But um, no, I'm, I'm teasing, of course. Uh, you know, it's it is something that we don't have to really imagine um, because we're all living it, you know, and have all been dealing with it for years now in, in various forms. And um, and yeah, I mean, I, I I second everything David said. And and it, to me, it 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 felt right to to incorporate this real battle that healthcare professionals are facing all the time, that we're, that ordinary folks that we're facing um, all the time that affects all of our lives. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, you don't have to reach into your imagination and try to imagine what it would be like, because we're all, we're all so familiar with it, you know? Yeah, I think that's really interesting, right? Maybe sometimes when you're acting, you are putting on a show and, and doing something that perhaps isn't as relatable as it is for the audience of, well, what's going on in the world right now. It's true, everyone is living it. I think that might be perhaps one reason why um, this show and others that reflect our reality are popular globally, right? Like this is a, even though the, the show is about America's oldest hospital, again, we're talking on a global scale, the, the data that we see in terms of demand for New Amsterdam, it is global. Um, so we also think, you know, why, what are the, the, the points of this story and, and what makes it so universally loved? Um, I think that, you know, that, that story point, of course, has touched every corner of, of the earth. Is there Absolutely. something, is there something about New Amsterdam that you wish people would talk more about in terms of press coverage or online conversations? I don't know if you read the forums or you look at social media, but is there sort of a, a narrative that might be missing from the general conversation about the show? Oh, you mean you mean about? Oh, go ahead, David. No, I'm 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 going to say the acting. Um, honestly, like we the caliber of actors on our show. Um, Ryan mentioned them by name, but I I should too. From Ryan to Janet, Freema, Jocko, Tyler, our five series regulars are delivering performances that to me are on par rival all the award kind of grabby shows. Um, and these, these guys are delivering just astounding, nuanced, hilarious, heartfelt, bruising performances. Um, and especially in season three, the one we're talking about, about during the pandemic, uh, it's, they're all delivering masterclasses and I don't think that gets talked about enough. David, I'll send you that $20 later. Um, <laughs> $30, you promise. <laughs> okay, $25. Um, uh, that's very sweet. I, um, you know, one thing I think the show does um, very well is like my favorite episodes land in this sweet spot where it's not a massive victory and it's not a massive loss. It's like the world is complicated 
and two more than one person can be right and there's no easy answer and you have this character in max this optimistic character who says we can fix the system and we can change things and then you have reality that is hard and immovable at times and difficult and and all these things and there's this sweet spot on the show where it's like I didn't save the world, but I changed this person's life in a small way today. And that means something. And I, I guess if I wish the show to have an influence on the world in any way, it's just to suggest that the answer is not always easy or, or black and white or clear. It doesn't have to be just left or right or right or wrong or whatever it may be that, you know, the, we're complex creatures and the answers I think are are, are sometimes um, nuanced as well. And sometimes, you know, in the media, especially you see such, it's A or it's B. And if you're an A, you're the worst and B, you're the best and all, and all that. So um, that kind of complication, that kind of nuanced humanity, that's my, that's my favorite part about the show, I think. And I wish that would carry forward into the general discussion. Yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice to have a little bit more of a nuanced um, conversation or reflection <laughs> when everything is definitely so black and white these days, it seems like. You know, so we're in season four now, and I know there are several seasons uh, that audiences can look forward to. What can you tell us a little bit about future seasons? Obviously, maybe those aren't written quite yet, but where does uh, Max, like what's, what, what can you share about the future of uh, Dr. Max Goodwin? Anything? Well, 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 if you look to my wall of ideas here, you'll see um, <laughs> aliens in season five. Here this is where the vampires come in. <laughs> here you'll see hospital falls into earthquake. This is a good one. And uh, no, sorry. <laughs> maybe more travels beyond London. Where do you, where, Ryan, where do you want to go in the well, world? You could maybe write that, you could suggest that. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. I'll, I'll let David speak to that because I don't know what we should or shouldn't say, but I know that travel is something that uh, that David has been has been wanting to to get into. Yeah, you know, we were we were scouting locations in the Dominican Republic when the pandemic hit. So we were wow. we were all set to take our crew out of New York and put them in a you know a great strange environment and, and see what American healthcare translates to in a different country. Um, but, uh, so that's one in our back pocket that we're really looking forward to. And as soon as the pandemic is, uh, behind us or endemic or, uh, manageable, that's, that's one we look, we are, I think we're all looking forward to going to Dominican Republic. <laughs> yes. We, we want to go to the beach. <laughs> that's awesome. But, but I, I think that's really interesting to think about, um, like you said, the American medical system kind of as a foil to these other medical systems around the world. So the idea of traveling and kind of bringing that lens, I think would also make this show stand out even more that as far as I know, that doesn't exist, right? That's kind of putting that medical drama genre to a whole nother, whole, whole nother conversation. Um, so for what it's yeah, worth. That's, that's a very, <laughs> that's a very cool point and a very good idea. And, and I, I, you know, we've, David and, and everyone has, we've dipped into a little bit of that going to London yeah. um, with Sharp's character and examining, you know, the, uh, the English healthcare versus, versus the American and, and Sharp struggling, having sort of, you know, American ideas in, a, in an English system and, and things like that and, and the pros and cons. Um, I love all that stuff. And New York City, you know, the, hot, the, the show being based on Bellevue, this, this huge public hospital in New York, New York City is such a a melting pot for different kinds of people from different places with different ethnicities and religious beliefs and um, from different all over the world. So um, yeah, that's, that's definitely something to a direction we want to go for sure. That's great. So one last question for both of you, this is kind of zooming out a little bit. Um, you know, the, the theme of this virtual festival that we're participating in right now is revolutionary. And uh, I know that was the, you know, talking about a revolution is the first, is the name of the, the first episode of um, in January. So when we think about entertainment right now, um, I just, the first thing that you think of, what, what, what makes entertainment revolutionary right now in 2022? Mm. <laughs> There's so, well, uh, there's so much of it. And I, and I think 
you know, when I think about the TV that I grew up with, mm -hmm. it was purely escapist entertainment. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's all there was. I, you know, I, besides what Norman Lear was doing, I, you know, Knight Rider, the A-Team, uh, Hunter, like I just remember the, the TV, the hour long TV dramas that I grew up with. Um, and, and now there's so many outlets and so many shows that the, the scope of ideas and the scope of issues and the scope of characters being portrayed is, is revolutionary, I think. If you look at the, the spectrum from Pose to Yellow Jackets to Succession, I, I think the breadth of, of entertainment is, is pretty revolutionary. Mm -hmm. It's my hot, my hot take. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I think, I think, you know, there's been um, a reach to find um, voices from all walks of life, um, voices who haven't um, had as much opportunity in storytelling before, um, and just more accessibility for audiences to see people like them on screen, whatever that means, whoever that is, um, and and telling those stories authentically and and um, connecting to different audiences in in that way, um, that kind of relevance, I hope is is a direction that entertainment keeps pushing in, so 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 people feel um, uh, that they are, you know can find stories about them no matter no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, you know? Absolutely. So, uh, okay, now actually here's my last question. What are you watching right now? I just started a show on Netflix called uh, Archive 81. Have you heard of that? No. Oh, it's, it's, it's actually great stuff. It's like, a, um, it's kind of like thrillery, mind bendy, ghost story, stuff um and is it, it's, is it american it, i believe it's american if it's based wow. on a foreign series or something I, I i i don't know um but i think it's american i think it's original and uh and it's very fun it's just one that just keeps like what like why is that how who is that and it just keeps you just have to keep keep on clicking it's uh it's a it's a fun one good to know adding that to my list okay yeah. david yeah. what about you what are you watching Oh, uh, I have kids, so I don't get to watch as much as I want to or should, but uh, I, I do love Succession. I, I, I just can't wait for it to come on. Mm -hmm. good one. The writing, the acting, I just, I eat it up. Something about that theme song too. Oh yeah, and the way they, the way they um, manipulate the theme mm -hmm. subtly for each scene, I could go on. <laughs> I still haven't seen Succession. I know everybody loves it. I, 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 I've, I've met Kieran a handful of times and did a little thing with him once and he's one of the coolest guys and so talented. So I, um, I will be watching. Well, yeah. the good thing is now when you wait, you can, you can truly binge multiple seasons in one sitting. So maybe you wait till it's a nice rainy weekend. I don't know where you are. And you got a whole long weekend ahead of you just to relax and watch some, some crazy stuff go down. <laughs> there's so, like David said, I mean, as we all know, there's, there's just so much these days. There's so much out there and uh, it's cool. You know, it's great that there's an appetite and an audience, you know, I mean, there's a lot of life out there. So there should be a lot of stories. Absolutely. Ryan, David, thank you both so much. This has been such a pleasure for us and uh, we really appreciate your time. Thanks again. Thank you so thank much. You.